Welcome to the Shadow Bear Story Session, the podcast about brutally dark and insanely hilarious old folk tales and fairy tales. We're going through the original versions of Grimm's fairy tales, today's tale being The Raven. We begin. We're getting right to it this week, folks. Once upon a time, there was a queen who had a daughter, and she was so little that she had to be carried in her mother's arms. Well, that's most children. You know, nothing really special about that. Any baby or child is going to be that small. Then they get bigger. That's what happens. We continue. One day, the child became restless, and no matter what the mother said, she wouldn't keep quiet. The mother became impatient, and as she looked at the ravens flying around outside the castle, she opened the window and said, I wish you were a raven and would fly away. Then I'd have my peace and quiet. That is brutal. That is a terrible thing to say to your daughter. Also, why would she open the window and say that to the ravens? That's unnecessary. Why open the window at all? Regardless, that is a brutal thing to say to a baby. Babies are loud. That's what happens. Little kids, they have fits. Don't say I wish you would fly away. This is miserable. We continue. No sooner had she said those words and the child was changed into a raven and flew from her arms out through the window. See? This is what happens. This is what happens. You, th- you thought you'd be all dramatic and open the window and be like, go on, go then, turn into a raven. Well, she did. And look at you now, queen. We continue. The bird flew far away and nobody could follow her. She headed for a dark forest where she stayed for a long time. Well, you know what? Maybe she's better off. She seemed like she was fine to leave. She turned into a raven. Okay, at that point, that's the end of it. Her mom did that to her, clearly, through some weird accidental magic. But at that point, she is now a raven child. She could just stay and be like, oh, why'd you do this, Mom? That was awful. But no, she's like, great, now I can leave. I didn't want to live here anyway. (laughs) And so this little girl decided to fly away. So you know what? Good for her. This mom was mean. We continue. I don't, I'm, I don't, I'm not. All right, don't take that to mean like I'm encouraging any children to run away or anything. It's just point being this little girl. Clearly, the feelings were mutual in terms of the queen wanting her to fly away for some peace and quiet. This kid was like, done, I'm out. We continue. Sometime later, a man was making his way through this forest when he heard the raven calling. Wouldn't there, like a, wouldn't there be a ton of ravens? How does he know it's this raven? It's a dark forest. It's got to be full of ra- ravens. I almost said raisins. He went toward the voice. The voice... So it has human speech? This is a... Is the little girl still talks like a person? Unclear. He went toward the voice, and as he came closer, the raven said... Okay, clear. It's definitely talking now. The raven said, I am a king's daughter by birth and have been cursed by a spell. However, you can set me free. Okay, this raven is being super upfront about what's going on. Why does... She's staying in the forest, though. She was cursed by her mother, clearly. And if someone can set her free, why would she hide out in a place where no people are? Bad plan, Raven. Also, I'm super unclear how long, like, how old is this kid? Because it was very small, clearly, when turned into a raven. But it just said she stayed for a long time. Is that years? Is she still like a toddler? Is it like 20 years later? This would be very helpful information. In any event, moving forward. How can I do this? He asked. Go into the house over there, she said. There's an old woman sitting inside. She'll offer you something to eat and drink and tell you to enjoy the meal. But you're not to touch a thing. You're not to drink. Because if you drink anything, you'll fall asleep and won't be able to release me from the spell. In the garden behind the house, there's a big pile of tan bark. 
you're to stand on it and wait for me. I shall come three days in a row at two o'clock in the afternoon with a carriage. But if you aren't awake, I won't be set free. What? This is an extremely convoluted plan right here, Raven. Okay, so she's like, go into the house. A lady's going to offer you something to eat and drink. Don't drink anything. And then stay there for three days, potentially four, depending on what time it is today, if it's after 2 p.m. or whatever. Is it 2 p.m.? Two o'clock, yeah, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And then stay at this lady's house for three to four days? This lady's not going to be cool with that. This man, random man just staying for days and every day in the afternoon, going to the backyard and standing on her pile of tan bark, which I'm assuming is just bark, like tree bark drying in a, in a, in a backyard. And he's not supposed to drink anything. How is he going to survive with no, with no water? For the four days. All right. Also, she's going to arrive. So she's going to come there three days in a row with a carriage. Like a carriage that someone would like drive in? Like a horse-drawn carriage type of carriage? I just want to find out about that. Anyway, I would not be up for this, personally. <laughs> if I heard this from a raven, I'd be like, this is for sure a trap. They're going to set that tan bark on fire or something and light me up. I, I, mm. Also, this happens in these stories. There's like such a convoluted, nonsensical, random plan. Also, who is this lady? She Is she the one who cursed him? Doesn't seem like it, because that was the queen. So who is this lady? We continue. The man said he'd do everything, but the raven said... Oh, I can already tell you won't set me free. You'll take something from the old woman. Well, don't, like, neg the guy. Don't, like, discourage the guy. <laughs> what do you like? Someone, you ask someone for help, and then they're like, okay, I'll help you. And then they're like, nah, you're not going to do it. <laughs> like, screw you. <laughs> he said he's trying to help. Dude, he's less inclined to do it if you're just going to be mean about it. Raven. Maybe she's a teenage girl in a raven form now, and that's why she's like moody and, and annoying about stuff. <laughs> Again, the man promised her he wouldn't touch the food or drink. However, once he was inside the house, the old woman went over to him and said, How worn out you are. So I guess just like everyone's mean. Come and refresh yourself. Have something to eat and drink. No, said the man. I don't want to eat or drink. Well, at that point, like, if you're the old lady, she's like, okay, bye then. Why would you stay here for three to four days if you're not going to eat or drink anything? That's weird. Leave my house, please. You're just going to be here hanging out? That's creepy. No, thank you, sir. Move along. We continue. But she wouldn't leave him in peace and kept saying... Well, if you don't want to eat, just take a sip from the glass. One little sip won't hurt. All right, well, now, come on. You can't be talking to someone like that and have them not realize it's a trap. Be like, all right, well, then goodbye. Don't be like, oh, no, please have something. Just a little bit. It's going to be fine. You're going to love it so much. No, come on. You're obviously trying to trap. I want to see what's going to happen, though. I kind of want him to fail because I want to know what happens if he, f if he fails. Is it just that she won't get turned free? Also, that's a stupid way to lift a curse. Go to that lady and don't accept any food or drinks. What? <laughs> that's like not a cool, mystical, magical way to break a curse by refusing someone's hospitality as a guest. <laughs> like That's not, not super creative. Finally, ugh. Here we go. Finally, he let himself be persuaded and drank. Come on, buddy. Ugh. Toward two in the afternoon, he went outside into the garden and climbed onto the pile of tan bark to wait for the raven. Well, why even do it at that point? You know you've already failed. Why, like, stick to the plan? 
when it like it was very clear that the plan was very simple. I mean, not that simple, really. But there were very few things that he really couldn't do. The one thing, really, just don't eat or drink. That was the one rule, what not to do over the course of those three days. And he did the one thing, and he's like, I'm going to stick it out and see what happens anyway. I have nothing better to do than stand on this tan bark every day. All right, well, there he is. He's on the tan bark. As he stood there, he suddenly felt so tired that he couldn't help himself and had to lie down and rest a little. He didn't want to fall asleep, but no sooner had he stretched himself out than his eyes closed by themselves and he fell asleep. He slept so soundly that nothing in the world could have wakened him. At two o'clock, the raven came driving up in a carriage with four white horses. But she was already in full mourning and said, I already know he's asleep. What is with this, like, over it, Raven? <laughs> also, the Raven driving up in the carriage with the four white horses? What is going on there? How, sh- how does this Raven have horses? Wouldn't the Raven just fly up? None of this makes any sense whatsoever. There has been zero, not a single character has any motivation or explanation behind any of their choices, or has has there been any explanation for why anything has happened or is the way that it is, other than mom was mad that the kid was loud and said a thing and then the thing happened. That is the only, like, causality we have seen at any point in the story thus far. Well, all right. This um, moody raven is rolling her eyes. She's like, ugh, he's probably asleep already. We continue. When she drove into the garden, he was indeed fast asleep. She climbed out of the carriage, went over to him, and shook him and called him, but he didn't wake up. I mean, shook him and called... She's a raven. She climbed out of the carriage? Do they mean fly? This story is confused. The story itself is confused. She continued to cry out until he finally awoke from his sleep, and she said, I see that you can't set me free, but I shall come again tomorrow. Why? Why then? I'll be driving in a carriage drawn by four brown horses. You are not to take anything at all from the old woman, neither food nor drink. He replied, I won't. Certainly not. However, she said, I know already that you'll take something. What the? What is the point of any of this now? Okay, so he failed. It's done. It's over, right? Why is she like, okay, keep doing this. I know that now you can't. Like, we failed, but keep doing it. What? Why? And then why would he agree? None of this makes any sense. All right, at noon the next day, The old woman came to him again and asked him why he wasn't eating and drinking, and he replied, I don't want anything to eat or drink. However, she placed the food and drink in front of him so that he could smell everything, and she convinced him to drink once more. What's even the point? I mean, yeah, at that point, I'd be like, yeah, I might as well. I failed already. Toward two o'clock, he went into the garden and climbed onto the pile of tan bark to wait for the raven. Again. Then he felt so tired that his limbs could no longer support him since he couldn't help himself. He lay down to sleep a little when the raven drove up in her carriage drawn by four brown stallions. Where is she getting these horses in this carriage? She is a raven. She was in full mourning again and said, I know he's already sleeping. I mean, yeah, with this attitude, maybe if she hadn't, maybe if she had shown a little bit of confidence in him. Like, from the beginning, I'd be like, yeah, you can do it. I believe in you. Maybe that would have helped. <laughs> I feel like it would have in any circumstance. Show a little confidence. Don't be like, ugh, you, look, you stupid. You're probably not gonna. That's not helpful. This guy said he would help you. Okay, so, showed up. She said, I know he was already sleeping. When she went over to him, he lay fast asleep and couldn't be wakened. She climbed out of the carriage, shook him, and tried to wake him. It was more difficult than the day before until he finally awoke. 
I certainly see, said the raven, that you can't free me. Tomorrow at two o'clock I shall come once more. But it will be the last time. My horses will be black, and I shall be dressed all in black. You are not to take anything from the old woman, nothing to eat or drink. Certainly not, he said. Oh, I know for sure that you'll take something, she replied. What? I'm getting mad at this story now. <laughs> because now, all right, I'm really, there better be like an awesome twist coming up. Let's, let's find out. Because we're not, we got, we got a ways to go here yet. So, I'm, I'm very curious. We continue. The next day, the old woman asked him what the matter was and why he wasn't eating or drinking. I don't want to eat or drink, he replied. In spite of this, she said he should taste how good all the food was just one time. Otherwise, he would die from hunger. So he let himself be persuaded and drank something again. When the time came, he went outside into the garden, <laughs> just going through the motions again and again, and climbed onto the pile of tan bark to wait for the princess. What is the... What does the old woman... Like, what's this... What is this from her perspective? What's happening here? She comes, She shows up at noon. It's like, oh, that guy is still here. I'll, I'll make him eat something. He's gonna. Everyone knows he's gonna. No one has any confidence or belief in anyone in this kingdom. <laughs> Even in themselves or in others. And, yeah, so I guess I just live in this house and just offer sed sedatives, like sedative-laced food and drip beverages to people who come by for really no reason, I guess. I don't know how, if she's, how aware she is of the raven and the princess and all that's going on, because we've not been led to believe that there's any connection. Ugh. Okay, well, drank something again, went up and waited for the princess, but he became so tired that he couldn't keep standing and lay down and slept like a log. At two o'clock, the raven came, and her carriage was drawn by four black horses. The carriage and everything else were also black, and she was already in full mourning. I know he's asleep, she said, and he won't be able to set me free. Yes, yeah, so why are any of you doing this? When she went over to him, he was lying there sound asleep. She shook him and called him, but he couldn't wake him up. But she couldn't wake him up, so she put a loaf of bread beside him. No matter how much he took from the bread, it would always replenish itself. How much he took from... So he's eating? So he's, like, sleep eating now? So he wouldn't... Yeah, that's, what, that's what's happening. She puts a loaf of bread next to him, and he's, like, all sleepy and just eating it. And then the bread is replenishing itself with each bite. This is some wild stuff right here, guys. I really hope this is the turn where it just goes off the rails and a bunch of crazy stuff happens, because I am ready for that. Then she placed a piece of meat next to him. No matter how much he took from the meat, it would always replenish itself. The third thing she placed next to him was a bottle of wine. So this dude is just having like a whole feast while asleep. No matter how much wine he drank, he would all, it would always replenish itself. So now he's wasted as well, I guess. After that, she drew a golden ring from her finger and placed it on his finger. Her name was engraved on it. Finally, she left him a letter on the ground in which she explained that the things she had given him would never run out, and she concluded her letter by saying, I, I clearly see that you can't set me free in a place like this. But if you still want to save me, then come to the golden castle of Mount Stromberg. You can do it. I know that for sure. What? 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 What the actual hell, guys? So now she she's like, well, you have done literally nothing that I've asked, you have failed in every capacity, every single day. Not once did you succeed. But, you 
I, if you still want to save me, come to this mountain. I know you can do that. Why? Why do you know you can do? he can do that? Why would you believe that? Also, why would you give him a ring with your name engraved on it? How do you have this ring with your name engraved on it? You're a raven. You fly out of the, the castle with this on still. You weren't led to believe anything like that. Also, her doing all of this in raven form is a hilarious mental image to me. <laughs> like, just picturing a raven with, like, this bottle, bottle of wine. Why is she giving him all this stuff, too? He doesn't deserve any of this. Is he our hero? Is that what this is setting up here? Is this idiot the hero of the story? Who has started off his journey by failing three consecutive times by showing absolutely no willpower or perseverance or conviction of any kind. All right, so she wrote this letter and is like, you can come to Mount Stromberg. I know you can. And after she had given him all those things, she climbed back into her carriage and drove off to the Golden Castle of Mount Stromberg. I wonder if Mount Stromberg is really a place. That would be awesome. I'm going to look it up after this. When the man awoke and saw that he had slept, he was terribly sad and said, I'm sure she's been, she's been here, and I haven't set her free. Yeah, buddy, because you didn't do anything she said. Then he noticed the things lying beside him, and he read the letter that explained everything that had happened. So he stood up and set out for the golden castle of Mount Stromberg, even though he didn't know where it was. Guys. Guys. <laughs> well then, ha so he set out for a place he didn't know what it was. Then he, what, how does he know what direction even to go? Maybe ask the old lady. Who is this old lady? What is happening in this story? <laughs> All right. Well, he's going to stick to it. Who even is he? What is he doing? What does he want? Where did he come from? Where was he going? What is any information about anything? <laughs> oh, my God. All right. After he had wandered about the world for a long time, I guess as you would when you're like, where do I go? Where's Mount Stromberg? I don't know. Maybe like look for a mountain. You can probably see a mountain. They said they're in a dark forest. The climate tree. Look for. There's ways to figure out where a mountain is. It might be the wrong mountain, which would be really defeating if you got to the top of a mountain and it wasn't the right mountain. Find a person. And ask. Don't just wander around for a long time, as it says he does here. Well, he finally came to a dark forest, and continued wandering. <laughs> Great. For 14 days. And realized he couldn't find his way out. <laughs> this guy is this guy is incompetent. This guy sucks at everything. He's done nothing noteworthy or commendable. Other than, like, for seemingly no reason, been like, I'm going to help this girl who doesn't believe in me. I don't know if that is nice or hell is or noble. I, I yeah, I generally don't. All right. Well, he's lost now. When it turned evening, he was so tired that he lay down beneath a bush and fell asleep. He, this didn't happen for 14. He says he continued wandering for 14 days and then he fell asleep. So he was awake for 14 days. Buddy, of course, if you're awake for that long, which I don't think you physically can be without dying, of course you're you're not going to be thinking straight and you're not going to be able to find Mount Stromberg, buddy. Come on. The next day, he moved on. And in the evening, as he was about to lie down beneath another bush, why did we even do that thing But where it's like, and then he fell asleep. The next day, he kept going until the evening of that day. There was just, what? This story is really frustrating me right now. All right. Next day he moved on. In the evening, as he was about to lie down beneath another bush, he heard such a moaning and groaning that he was unable to sleep. 
okay. Don't try if you if you're alone in a forest and you hear a bunch of moaning and groaning, don't just try to sleep through it. Be concerned, buddy. If you're going to sleep under a bush and you hear like a bunch of upset upsetting noises, moaning and groaning, you should find out what's going on or at the very least, don't find out what's going on. Just go in the opposite direction of those. Don't try and sleep through it, because something bad is probably going to happen. But couldn't sleep. When the hour came for people to light their lamps, he saw a light glimmering in the distance, got up, and went toward it. Isn't this a dark forest? This is a dark forest that he's in. What do you mean time for people to light their lamps? So I guess there's a town in this forest. It didn't say he was in a town. It said he was lying down beneath a bush. All right, this story is so lost. But regardless, we shall press on, much as he is in his idiotic and misguided and futile attempt to find Mount Stromberg. <laughs> Us wandering through this story is like this guy wandering through life trying to found, find Mount Stromberg or find any purpose to his own life, I guess, which is the only reason I can surmise why he would continue trying to do this. Ooh, okay, so he saw a light glimmering in the distance, got up and went toward it. Shortly after, he came to a house that appeared to be very small because a giant was standing in front of it. Here we go, people. Let's do this. Enter giant time. Whether you go inside or stay here, he thought to himself, the giant will put an end to your life, so you might as well do it. That's not true. That's not true at all. He might not have even seen you yet. He just saw a giant there, and he's like, well, I'm going to die, so I might as well go at the death. Nah, buddy, this dude is just proving to have worse and worse judgment and less and less common sense with every decision he makes. <laughs> All right, so he stepped toward the door, and when the giant saw him, so yeah, the giant hadn't even seen him yet. He hadn't even seen him yet, and he's still like, I'm going to die. This giant's going to kill me even though he hasn't seen me and there's no reason to believe that because he's just standing by a door. Uh, when the giant saw him, he said, It's good that you've come. I haven't had a thing to eat for a long time, so I'm going to gobble you up for supper. Let things be, said the man. If you want something to eat, I've got something with me. If that's true, said the giant, you can rest easy. I wanted to eat you only because I had nothing else. I think everyone in this story is just stupid. <laughs> so now he's like, oh, okay, cool. If you have food, I'll take that instead of you. I mean, you're a giant. You probably need more food. So who knows what he's got? Also, yeah, this guy could have easily escaped this giant by just not walking right up to him. So it's like if you're hiding and you see a, like, tiger, like, 500 yards ahead of you. And you're like, oh, that tiger's gonna kill me. I should just walk up to it. Like, nah, man, you can just turn around. It's far away. Just turn around. You're fine. Chill out. They both went inside and sat down at the dinner table, and the man took out the bread, wine, and meat that never ran out. That is a very convenient collection of things to have when you're wandering around in the forest. Also, now we know why he's just wandering around. It's because he's drunk all the time, because he has an endless bottle of wine and no other liquid, no other fluids. It's not an endless bottle of water. It's an endless bottle of wine. <laughs> so this guy has just been wandering around a hammer drunk for weeks at least. 
likely more. It said he wandered for a long time, and then he found a forest and wandered for 14 days, and I think it's now been a couple days since then. So he, we're probably going on months now of this man just wandering around drunk as hell. Being like, hey, do you know where Mount Stromberg is? I need Mount Stromberg. There's a raven lady there for me. I think I want to help her. This guy sucks. All right. And they ate until they were full. After supper, the man asked him, Can you tell me where to find the golden castle of Mount Stromberg? The giant said, I'll look it up on my map. It shows all the cities, villages, and houses. Great. Super convenient. That worked out nicely. He took out a map that he kept in the room and looked for the castle, but it wasn't on it. <laughs> what? This is a clunky story. A map that he kept in the room. Unnecessary information. Unnecessary story. Just say he took out a map. That's all you need to know. Don't worry, he said. I've got even larger maps in the closet upstairs. We can look for it on them. I don't know. I mean, I've just like subconsciously changed my voice to to reflect this giant and everyone in the story being an idiot. But uh, all right, now they're going to go find uh, more maps. A riveting development. (laughs) They looked at the maps, but couldn't find the castle. Now... Well, then why even have the bit where it's like, oh, I've got more maps. Just be like, you looked on the map, but it wasn't there. That's all you need. That's all that's happened. The fact that they found more maps and also couldn't find them doesn't change anything. Now the man wanted to move on. But the giant begged him to stay for a few more days until his brother returned. Aww. I feel bad now. I feel really sad for this giant. He just wants his brother to get back, and he was lonely and didn't have food. Oh, I feel sad. Now I feel bad for making fun of him. <laughs> he's, just a, he's just a sweetie. He's just a big sweetheart. Wait a few more days until his brother returned. He had gone out to fetch some wood. He also had good maps. <laughs> he also had good maps. They could try again with his maps and to find the castle for sure. <laughs> this is... All right, now I love this. They're just like, oh, man, we need to get more maps. These are just a bunch of... These giants must be, like, obsessed with maps. Who has that many maps? I love that this story has just evolved. I've really turned a corner now. This story has just gotten so weird and silly and ridiculous. And now I'm super into it. I love that we're now in a giant, a house of two giant brothers who are obsessed with maps. <laughs> That's where this story has taken us. Two cartographer giants is where we are. <laughs> okay, so the man waited until the brother came back. Well, the brother said he didn't know for certain but he believes that the castle of Stromberg was on his map. Oh, you think it's going to be on his map? They're really building the suspension. Uh, the, the, the suspense. The map suspense here. All of the tension that's being built right now is map related. <laughs> and more maps. Then the three of them ate once again until they were quite full. Afterward... The second giant went to his room and said, Now I'll take a look at my map. Aw, snap. You think it's going to be on that map? Man, they're really building this. But the castle wasn't on it. (laughs) Oh, I love this story so much. I'm not even mad anymore. You guys, I've lost my mind. I'm not even mad anymore. I love this story so much. Then he said he had another map upstairs in a room full of maps. It had to be on one of them. I promise I'm not making this up. I'm not improvising this. This is literal. This is all in the story. We have now... There have been like five different beats of let's look at this map. 
it's not on it. Let's look at these maps. Nope, it's not on those. My brother's getting back. It's going to be on his maps. Oh, he's back. Look on his map. Oh, it's not on his map. Oh, he's got more maps upstairs. Let's look at those maps. Oh, it's not on those maps. That's where we that's what's happened. Literally every all of those steps. <laughs> this is this is riveting storytelling, folks. All right. He had another map upstairs in the room full of maps. It had to be on one of them. When he brought the maps downstairs, they began searching again. And finally, they found the castle of Stromberg. Oh, I, I, cannot, I cannot express my elation that on their fifth or sixth expedition of searching over maps, they found the castle of Stromberg. And you know what? I said we didn't need all of those steps of looking through maps, and we didn't. That's true. That's for sure true. But boy, am I glad we walked through every one of those steps. <laughs> I had a great time doing it. So they found the Castle of Stromberg. However, it was thousands of miles away. How will I ever get there? Asked the man. Just get drunk and wander in the same direction, and it'll fly by in a alcohol-induced haze. I've got two horses to... Oh, I've got two hours to spare, said the giant. I'll carry you as far as I can, but then I must return home and nurse our child. There was a child here the whole time? They're brothers. Who's... How do they... Where's this child? Who's child? Where does this child come from? Where's the lady giant? Aw, it's like a single dad and his brother raising a baby giant. Then just compiling insane numbers of maps. This is our story, guys. These giants raising a child while indulging their love of maps is definitely where the where the juice is in this in this narrative so far. This is for sure the my favorite part of the story, hands down, not even close. Um, yeah, can we just live here and stay with these people in this story? All right, so he carried the man until he was about a hundred hours' walk away from the castle and said, You can go the rest of the way by yourself. Yes, indeed, said the man. I can certainly do that. That doesn't inspire a lot of confidence <laughs> in saying that. I mean, first off, he has not successfully done anything the only thing that he has successfully done is get on top of the tan bark pile other than that at 2 p.m every day other than that he has failed every single step of the way bar none i mean in fairness if you're leaving a note for someone hey find me at this place and they don't have, you know, modern technology and maps. <laughs> now I'm just saying maps so many times, I feel like I'm losing my mind. She should have put in the letter, like, walk northwest, you know? Like, she knows where she's going. She knows where that castle is. Give him a hint where the castle is. Help this guy out. Because, hey, he needs help, okay? This guy is not a rocket scientist. He's not firing on all cylinders, you know? Give him as much help as possible, because he needs it. The giants, they're like, we have no faith in this man. We got to carry him most of the way. But considering it was a thousand, it was thousands of miles, and they got him a, a hundred hours, which, you know, that's, that's what, four, four or five days? Like... I mean, walking straight, so if you're sleeping, it's going to take longer than that. But if they covered that much distance in two hours, you said this uh, you had a couple hours. Yeah, I've got two hours to spare. I'll carry you as far as I can. And they covered thousands of miles in two hours. Carry him that last hundred hours. It's not for him. It's not going to be that that long at all. Really, this guy needs so much help. This guy needs as much help as possible. Again, this is a story where the hero 
has done nothing to deserve our admiration. <laughs> so really, help this buddy out. All right. I can certainly do that. Still don't believe you can. As they were about to separate, the man said, Let's first eat once more until we're full. No, man, don't get drunk now. <laughs> don't drink a bunch of wine. It's not going to help. After they did that, the giant took his leave and went home. I mean, I'm surprised the giants didn't take... He, they should have, honestly, he owes them either the bread or the meat. Like, you don't, you don't need both, but... Now, one giant, the one who was left there when, when he was standing by the door who we first met, he was starving. He was, I mean, like, you're a giant. It's, you, you eat a lot of food, you know? You need, a, you need a lot. So, if they have an endless bread loaf or piece of meat to eat, that is incredibly helpful. He should have given them either or. He doesn't need both. You know, I mean, he's doing a lot of hiking, so maybe he should take that that piece of meat for the protein. <laughs> but, but either way, throw him, throw him the loaf. You know, they got a baby, they got a kid, they got a baby giant, a like growing giant. A giant needs nutrition, which you're not gonna get a lot in the bread, but it's better than nothing. If they're already if that brother. Oh man, I just realized that first brother that we met was starving, and there was a child. That is bleak. That is sad. Yeah, man, give him, give him the bread loaf. Help him out. Ooh, okay. So they, they ate again. After they did that, the giant took his leave and went home, while the man went on day and night until he finally came to the golden castle of Mount Stromberg. But the castle was up on a glass mountain, and he saw the enchanted maiden driving around the castle. So, so there's now. I'm assuming. Is, is she a girl in girl form or is she a raven? Because it said she turned into a raven. And like everything that has happened since then, has not alluded. To her being a raven. I mean, she said she's cursed. It's presumably me, and and the only way she can be freed, is by that series of steps that he then failed at. But then she's like. It's okay, just come to this mountain and you can free me. But presumably her being freed means being turned back into a human form. So I'm assuming he's just watching a raven sitting in a carriage being driven around by a bunch of horses. This is wild, guys. <laughs> this story is all over the map. It's on a glass mountain. Driving around the castle. Okay. He wanted to climb up to her, but he continuously slipped on the glass and became very distressed and said to himself, It's best if I build a little hut for myself. I've got plenty to eat and drink. So he built a hut for himself and stayed there for one solid year and watched the princess every day drive around on top of the mountain, but he couldn't climb up to her. Why is it... Why? What? Why? Dude, do something. It's been a year? I think I would say for one solid year. That really emphasizes, like, uh, no, seriously, not 11 months. A year, a full year, this idiot just lived here watching this woman drive around in a carriage, being like, ah, oh, I can't get up there. You can build a hut, build a ladder, bro. Build something else. Don't just be like, well, I live here now and am doing nothing to help myself. I'm just existing making no progress in my mission, but also not carrying on with my life, whatever that even is. Seriously, who is this man? <laughs> like, What is going on in his life? Where is he coming from? He clearly has nothing going on himself. This is... Oof. All right, well, this dude's been here in a hut for a year, 
just watching this lady. Can she can see him presumably too? She's like driving, she's doing laps around the castle. Has he tried like yelling, like calling out to her when she like passes by him? She's like, hey, remember me? You told me to come, come here. I'm here. I can see you. The fact that I can see you means you can probably see me, right? Dude, what are you doing? Help yourself. This man is an idiot. One day, he saw three giants. Let's go, (laughs) fighting with each other, and called out to them, God be with you. They stopped fighting, listened to see where the cry came from, and then resumed fighting when they couldn't see anyone. (laughs) All right. Well, I uh, can't say that I'm disappointed by there being more giants now. The giants are the best part of this story. So let's continue. Finally, I know, so they couldn't see anyone. It was dangerous just to be near them. But again, the man called out, God be with you. Again, they stopped, looked around, and resumed their fighting when they couldn't see anyone. So what is this brawling each other? It's like, hear the thing, like look around, like who, who, who said that? Also, why? That's a weird thing to say. Be like, hey, do you guys know Kronk and Glonk? And their wee little child, Blonk? I don't know who the giants that he knew before are, but I mean, it can't be like a ton of giants, right? They probably know each other. But just shouting God be with you is a weird random thing to say. Finally, the man called out for a third time. God be with you. Again, this dude just like doesn't ever adapt his behavior based on results. You know what I mean? They say the definition of insanity is doing the same thing and expecting a different result. This man is the most insane person in the world. Back when he was laying on the pile of tan bark, he did the same thing and the same thing happened every time. When they were looking for maps, all right, that's a bad example because on like the, the... 20th map or whatever they did find the the thing but he's been here for a year every single day and made no change to his plan and somehow expects things to get better and now he's just yelling the same thing at a bunch of fighting giants it also doesn't seem to indicate he has a plan just be like hey can you help me like throw me up this mountain or something No, he's not doing that. He's just shouting a random pleasantry at them. Who, what, what is your thought process with any of this, buddy? I don't like this guy. I just like the giants. (laughs) Hashtag here for the giants. (laughs) All right. Finally, the man called out for a third time. God be with you. And this time he thought to himself, you'd better go see what these three are up to. About time. The third time he's like, hey, I wonder what they're doing. That's insane. He, he yells out at them three times, and only after the third time, he says, like, wonder what they're up to. That would be the first thing you think of. That would be the first thought that crosses your mind when you see three fighting giants, as opposed to shouting, hey, like, just like, hey, how's it going? Like, no, he, oh, my God, this dude. So he went to them and asked them why they were fighting. One of them said he had found a stick. And that whenever he struck a door with it, the door would spring open. The second said he had found a cloak, and that whenever he hung it over his shoulders, he would be invisible. The third said he had caught a horse, and that one could ride it anywhere, even up the glass mountain. Then the man said, I'll make an exchange with you. I'll take those three things, and to be honest, I don't have any money, but I do have other things that are worth more than money. First, however, I must test your things to see whether you've told me the truth. Aww. There's kind of something similar to this in a recent story, and I don't want to give it away in case you haven't heard or watched that one, but I really hope he doesn't do the same thing here. But also, this doesn't explain why they're fighting. Right? They each found three different things. Okay, why are you fighting? Doesn't explain that. Or is it, is it if they were like, and we all want all of them? First off, 
That's stupid. That doesn't make any sense. There are three of them, and they found three things. That seems like a pretty perfectly even distribution of things. Ugh, okay. But in any event, again, we're not we're not gonna get information here <laughs> to explain any of this. <laughs> All right. Well, he wanted to test the things. They let him sit on the horse, put the cloak over his shoulders, and handed him the stick. Ugh. Man, this makes me sad. As soon as he had all three objects, they could no longer see him, so he gave all a... What? So he gave them all a good beating and cried out, Now are you satisfied? The man rode up the glass mount... Dude! What a horrible person! This man is awful. Before he was just an idiot, but now he's a psycho... At, like, he's just a terrible person. You knew what I was going to say there. What a terrible, awful human being. He stole their stuff and beat them. For no... For literally no reason. Just to take their stuff. So he's a thief, too. And also, giants helped him before. And now he's going to treat these ones like this? And also, he could have just straight up traded his stuff for their stuff. Or just the horse. All he needed was the horse to get up the glass mountain. You don't need the invisibility cloak. Or, I mean, maybe he'll end up needing it in the story. But right now, it's super greedy to just want everything and take everything. When he had three things, they had three things the noble thing to do would be to trade them. Or even for or whatever, for the horse. All you need is the horse. I hate this guy now. And he taunted them too. Now are you satisfied? So with the stick? Did he, give, he said give them a good beating. No, because the stick is whenever he struck a door with the stick, it would spring open. There was nothing, like, inherently... Gave them a good beating. They're giants. He couldn't beat up giants. He was a human size. But I, I, in, this, in this reality, he does. Even though there's, like, no base reality for the story. It's all over the place. But, man, I hate this guy. This guy is awful. All right, the man rode up. I don't want him to succeed here. The man rode up the glass mountain, and when he got to the top, he found the castle door was closed. So he struck the gate with the stick, and it immediately sprang open. He entered and went up the stairs until he came to a hall. There sat the princess, and she had a goblet filled with wine in front of her. However, she couldn't see him, because he was wearing the cloak. When he went over to her, he pulled off the ring that she had given him and threw it into the goblet so that it rang out. "'That's my ring!' she exclaimed. "'Well, then, the man who's going to set me free must be here somewhere.'" I hate this so much. She had her servants search all over the castle, but they couldn't find him. "'Why is he doing this? "'Why are you doing this now, bro?' Why are you, like, playing coy and hiding from her? You've been sitting there for a year, looking up, yearning, as she drives by. Now you're there, and you're going to be like, I'm going to be sneaky. Nah, dude. You're an idiot. She had her servants look all over the castle, but they couldn't find him. Indeed, he had gone outside, mounted the horse, and thrown off the cloak. When they finally saw him out by the gate, they screamed for joy. So he dismounted and took the princess in his arms. She kissed him and said, Now you finally set me free. Soon thereafter, they held the wedding and lived happily together. The End I I'm very disappointed by this ending. <laughs> I do not... Yeah, they, they really lost me when he stole those giant stuff and beat them up. That was, that was really not cool, man. Oof, that one stung. 
That one really stung. Also, he didn't do anything to deserve anything. And also, how did that break the spell? Can he? Can she go back home now? Does she live in the Glass Mountain? This is a castle. Is this a kingdom? Is she the queen or princess of this kingdom? Can she go back to home to her mother? Does she want to go back home to her mother? Who is this man? Where did he come? There are... <laughs> there are so many questions... That were, that came up over the course of the story, and in the beginning, in the middle, and in the end, none of them have any. None of the things that happened had any reasons for happening. None of, and so I don't know how to feel about any of this. <laughs> like, there's no. I don't particularly like anyone. I want the, also. How old is this princess? The spans of time that have passed are very vague. It says a long while. It's used the phrase a long while. A couple, like at least twice, maybe three times. So, but if if it was a long while, then it must have been, then he was wandering around for years. And also, what's even the deal with the like, hmm, I guess this is maybe the ring and the... Because there was the whole thing that happened with the him failing to drink, to not drink or eat, and then falling asleep and failing that miserably. But then she was like, doesn't matter if you get to this castle, it's fine. And I guess that's it. Just get to the castle and I'm free, whatever that means. Because it seems pretty clear just based on how things were going at the end. Like, she has a goblet and is drinking. It doesn't seem like she's a raven anymore. It doesn't seem like she's in raven form. I don't know at what point that changed. Because it seems like... Okay, he was walking through the forest in the beginning. And heard a voice crying out. So... Did she... Just like beak go back to being a human in human form when she once she was in the dark forest, and if so, what does it mean to be free like if she's back to human form, just go home. She's not like trapped, it doesn't seem like she's trapped, she's going all over the place here, she's traveling. With she has access to all these different carriages and horses of different colors. She's traveling. She's making moves. So if she is in human form and her the things she is capable of doing, it says she climbs out of the carriage. It used that phrasing back when they were with at the old lady's house and she was coming to see him at the the bark patch. They had the pile of bark. <laughs> it says she climbed out of the cat of the carriage. So that it all indications are that she was in human form, in which case, what does it mean she's cursed? What does it mean she's not free? Can't just go home. If she's cursed and just like has to be in those carriages or stuff or something like that, what does that have to do with the raven thing at the beginning? And that curse and her being turned into a raven, how is that related in any way? Because that's a curse if you're trapped in the form of a raven. But they never really seem to indicate that she is a raven, because she's riding around in a carriage all the time, and then at the end it's like she's sitting in a throne and drinking from a goblet. Ravens can't do that. I mean, I guess it could be like sitting on like one one claw and holding a goblet with the other one if it's like a giant raven screw this story man screw this story <laughs> like i'm like i'm mad at this story the only characters i liked were the giants <laughs> and this man was mean to the giants he was nice to the ones with the maps kind of even though, again, not that nice. He should have given him the bread and the meat. And also, he didn't end up needing 
the uh, endless meat, bread, or wine after he got the, the horse and the stick and the invisibility cloak. So why... Why didn't he just trade him for it? Trade traded for them. He didn't need, he also didn't need the invisibility cloak or the stick. Like he got all he needed was that horse. All he needed was the horse. Cuz he got so cuz he used the stick and the invisibility cloak, but he didn't need to cuz what happened was that he he broke in with the stick and the invisibility cloak to just, you know, to make himself invisible. And then threw the ring into her goblet and then went back outside. And then when they saw him outside, they're like, oh, great, you're here. Everything's fine. He didn't need to break in with the stick and the invisibility cloak to do the ring thing. He could have just knocked on the door and they would have come outside and been like, you're here. Great. Just like they did in the end. So he didn't need those things. He didn't need to beat up the giants. This is a horrible man right here. This is a horrible person. He could have just traded the bread, meat, and wine, the endless stuff, for the horse alone. The giants would have been better off because now they have things to satiate their giant appetites. And he would have still gotten everything he needed. He's greedy and mean and cruel to, for no reason, beat them up and taunt them. He did not need to do that at all. He could have just left in, on the horse because he was invisible already. And they couldn't follow him up the glass mountain anyway. What a terrible, terrible person. And the only thing that I want, that I liked in this story, was the giants with the maps. <laughs> Honestly, we're already past an hour here, so I'm not going to do a full adaptation here, but that's my ad- that's what I want. That's my adaptation. That's the TV show that I want. I want two brothers who are giants. This is like two and a half men giant version, and they're also they're cartographers and like super into max and maps, so better than two and a half men, so like way better than two and a half men. I'll be honest, I didn't really watch two and a half men, but... It's this like is that right? I, again, I didn't watch it, so I don't really know. But I prefer this. I'd watch the hell out of this. We got two giants who are brothers. One is you know not as smart. The other like, but he's very sweet. He's a total sweetheart. He's the heart and soul of the family. And then we got the other brother who's you know a little more of an adventurer. He's a bit roguish. He's kind of a ranger type. He goes out to the forest and for for days at a time and scavenging you know, not scavenges and like hunts and has adventures and brings things back for for his brother and his young child ah oh, so on their side here and then we've got them raising the child and then this man shows up who takes advantage of them ah oh, that's where that's the adaptation so we pick up we basically pick up where this left off and but it's from their perspective and their cousins come back, and their cousins are like, "Ah, oh, man, you wouldn't believe it. We found the, this awesome stuff. And then some guy showed up, and he stole it from us, and then beat us up. And now he's king up in the, the castle, Mount Stromberg. It's so terrible. And then the smart brother is like, tell me what this man looked like. They, they describe him. And it's like, Mount Stromberg, you say, I know a man who was, we we took almost directly to Mount Stromberg, and he looked exactly like that, but he stole from you, did he? And they're like, yeah. And so then we get these brothers and their little child and the three cousins, and they wage war against Mount Stromberg and the evil king, because that's what he is. He's an evil king. I don't have any animosity towards the princess, you know. She's she's the uh maybe she's sort of an emissary or she she helps reason with the not reason with the giants cuz I'm still on the giant side, but yeah, 
So then the giants crush the kingdom and the the queen, the prince formerly princess and no, now queen, um, goes back home and in with her adventures. And now the kingdom of Mount Stromberg is run by the giants, and it's the giant kingdom, and they've raised their their child, the the little giant lit to to be a to be a prince, prince giant, and uh, he he is a righteous. He's seen all of this happen. He's seen the, the horrors of giant warfare, and he wants a peaceful kingdom. And so he brokers a peace with the queen, who he very much liked. And ultimately, let's say they had they sees her as sort of a mother figure because he didn't have a mother figure himself, and so he. And the giant kingdom then form an alliance with, yeah, the raven princess who has now returned to her own kingdom. And by now, you know, her her mother has probably passed and she is this adventurer who has a whole, whole story and lore behind her. That would be an interesting subplot too, though. Her, uh, maybe the giants sort of help her retake. Yeah, I like that better. So... The giants, they kill the king and take over the kingdom, but they like the queen because the queen is nice. Queen's done nothing wrong. And if anything, she was very kind to to them and taught them all that she had even more maps to show them (laughs) and like was very nice to the baby giant or the, you know, child giant. And so the child giant sort of sees her as a mother figure. And then they help her take back her throne from her evil queen mother because we have no reason to believe that the the queen who initially was like i wish you were a raven and flew away we have no reason to believe that she's nice in any way i mean that on its own you know if that it could be a one-off where she said something without thinking but it's not a nice thing to say and she hasn't didn't do anything nice prior to that so I feel fully within my rights within my rights to to cast her as being a, an evil evil queen and so the uh, the princess is now uh, a- allied with the with the giants and they help her take her kingdom back. I love that for an adaptation. That was just an on the fly adaptation right there. And then we have the 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 kingdom of strong the kingdom of Mount Stromberg which is a giant kingdom and now the renewed kingdom of whatever that first kingdom was where the lady got turned into a raven. And maybe she'll re- she'll visit that old lady who lived in the woods. Still have no information on who she was, why she did any of the stuff that she did, or how she was related to anything else whatsoever. But uh, maybe she holds the secret to... to yeah. She holds. She ultimately holds the secret to undermining the kingdom of uh, the evil queen. Say that. I like that. So there we go. That'll do it. We did it. This was a wild one, y'all. Man, I hated it and I loved it at the same time. That's the thing with these. Even when they're weird and they make no sense, and there's so little information or motivation to go on for why characters do certain things or why anything happens i still it's it's still a ride i still love it so much <laughs> I, love, I love love these folk tales all right like subscribe tell someone about this i like doing it hopefully you like watching it and uh yeah i'll see you next time <laughs>